Well, I can switch to the draft page right now and uh, we can let them know that we're ready to go here. Yeah, for sure. So let's go ahead and do that. There's our lovely uh, current working drafting tool that someone has set up so oh so professionally on, on Google Docs. Google. Uh, you can't see the 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 map picks here, but we'll update. Actually, no, you can. I, I we can't see the. They have like an updated thing at the top that, that holds the map picks. Yep. So actually, we see the first map ban right now. It's going to be Ember. Oh, look at that. Yep. Yeah, you know, I I I'm not surprised by that. I've always said that Ember Grove has been probably one of the least gigantic maps out of all the gigantic maps it it feels the most kind of like a team deathmatch and less like a kind of like a moba yeah for sure and then um uh, mad on the other side have decided to ban sanctum falls that i was i did not see coming sanctum is an all-time favorite map uh from from professional players uh, it, it, Amani is a really big problem on that map, so maybe they're just hoping to to play a lot of maps where Amani isn't as much of a problem. But man, leaving both Heaven's Ward and Picaro Bay up was not what I was expecting. Yeah, I, 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 I don't remember exactly who it was, but I was really confident on a uh, on massive damage that they had someone who actually preferred to play Amani pretty regularly. But maybe right, I'm, maybe but, I'm yeah. mistaken. Well, either That's way. Really... Go ahead. Yeah, that's very that's very interesting. I I'm excited because this means that we will see either Heaven's Ward or Picaro Bay in this in this uh, matchup if it goes to best of three, and likely it, one of them will pick it. Maybe maybe that's the plan. Yeah. Just... Uh, this is game one of. Sorry, we didn't even show the bracket yet, but this is game one of the bracket of round one. Uh, we have two rounds today, and then a cut to semifinals after round two. Yeah, we sh probably should have shown the bracket. That was my mistake, but uh. That is Zenobia ban. The Zeno ban. I was not Whoa. ready for that. I mean, she has definitely spiked in popularity, especially kind of in in solo queue or or like kind of semi semi grouped queue. I've definitely seen her noticeably really stomping a lot of teams, uh, and just kind of being this constant problem. I mean, she's got all this AOE, um, the, all these debuffs. It's really easy to apply and just. She's got short ranges, but like when she's actually protected, she's actually near unkillable, and it's kind of scary. And yeah, man, and Ashlyn ban both. So, so I saw the Ashlyn ban coming. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of that today. Yeah, probably. But I just want to. I want to. I just want to touch on the Zenobia ban because this makes me feel so vindicated for so long now, saying that Zenobia <laughs> is crazy strong and people aren't respecting her. I don't. They, we. Uh, I don't think she's weak, but I think that they're just better people for for kind of the role that she wants to play. But either way, and it and it might. I was gonna say, there's the Paco pick. It might speak, and, and there are dittos allowed. We're gonna need to find a, a way to uh, to get dittos going here on this draft. I actually don't. But, I actually don't think that they are gonna do uh, dittos slash mirrors. They aren't. Yeah, I think that's actually um, entirely like single oh. characters only. Wow, Paco, that's very interesting. Paco so, first so this pick. was, yeah, this was this was something that I was kind of thinking about was maybe you ban the Zenobia and try and and they were hoping to pick Ashlyn. Unfortunately, it's been banned. But maybe you were picking the Zenobia and hoping to to kind of stop those classical counters to a brawl comp where you get massive poison application. Yeah, and you pick away the Paco, you pick away the Ramsey, uh, and then you get to play a really cool brawl comp. Um, but man the the ashland band really kind of messes that up into a trip and margrave pickup this is a very classical opening i would say yeah uh, if there was classical opening in in gigantic i think a lot of people would agree that this is a pretty you would probably see this a lot from very standard team comps i mean if i'm remembering correctly as well on top of what you said if this trip is going on mad it's gonna probably be a Rajre. a Rajre was probably one of the best known trip players not just in eu i think he was probably one of the best trip players globally um but if if that's actually not going to end up being him i will be very shocked but on the other side now for honey mustard girls we've got the hk and the sven being locked in yeah i i think the sven pick was kind of he was screaming from the other side of the corridor like begging to get picked up He's one of the only supports, like hard supports, really left in the game, other than Vadasi, who isn't as nearly as flexible as the Sven pick. 
Yeah, and um, Matt is... So this makes a lot of sense. Matt is opting to not pick their support right now. They're kind of going with just a lot of, like, hard hitters with the Margrave and the Wu having a bit of CC and then the trip to finish off kills. Of course, Team Matt to do a lot of, uh, do a lot of, uh, kind of just this constant peppering of damage. I love the Wu pick here. Uh, I think that one of the the downsides of Paco is he actually is one of the the tankier and kind of brawlier characters. Or Charnock, I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. But I think that he, <laughs> Paco is one of the the tankier or kind of brawlier characters that have a problem with the Wu. Uh, or Oru Charnock is basically they have this is I think I talked to you about this before this where I think there's going to be a lot of triple ranged in uh in this tournament because the ranged do, do so much damage in this patch and with a Sven and a Paco with a Paco going full tank I think he can really sit on the front line and uh and kind of make that happen and then finally the beckett for the womb killing at the end for red team yeah and beckett is just i feel like people have really put beckett on the back burner and it's totally undeserved she does so much insane amount of damage but the uh <laughs> i can i can see the chat kind of popping off right now with no support no uh no ramsey no amani like they're kind of i think really confused <laughs> about this I think, don't get me wrong, I think supports are very, very important in this patch of the game. I honestly, I don't think, I think if if my choices were Zandora, Vadasi, I honestly think I might rather not take a support in some comps. Yeah. I, I in do some agree. comps. Yeah. I now, mean, the, the, now the question of whether or not they should have per first picked like Margrave Sven is still there, but. Yeah, just kind of, uh, kind of letting Sven slide on the first two picks. I, I understand picking up Trip. I don't think that uh I don't think that Honey Mustard Girls would have picked Paco and then considered Margrave. It did seem like a little bit of a, a strange situation there. But this is also just round one. They might be trying something. You know, this is the time in a best of three where you can actually afford a loss because you're not getting knocked out game one regardless. And you know what? We're not too deep into it. It's two to three, so it's not it's not too bad. So we have these comps coming in here. We can see who who's playing what. Sully on the Oru. This is the uh, the captain of their team there. And this is on Heaven's Ward, my favorite map of the most recent patches. And you'll see they are not interested in fighting around the cliffs around D right now because there's a Wu in the game, and that's very scary when you can pull you off any map. Oh my gosh, I forgot to name the I forgot to change the team names. I've been so busy trying to stall with like facts and stuff. <laughs> so, Honey Mustard Girls on the Orion side, and other side will be Massive Damage or Mad for short. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. I'm a little nervous. I'm not usually in charge of the stream in the past, and I'm getting used to it. So, anyway. That's that's all right. We're, so, we saw that Mad got the first push, and they got a whole wound in their first push. That's the upside to playing these very aggressive, damaging comps, is when you do get a push, that thing's going to go down very, very quickly. Well, yeah, for and we sure. we have a fight going on here. There's Her Danner is pretty deep in there. He's the only tank on the team, and he's going to be chasing down. Looks like the trip running to the side, or is that the, that's the Wu? And that's what that one's gonna fizzle out pretty quick there. Now you got to see her dinner can take a good amount of punishment on that Paco pick. Yeah, I mean Paco has a really sh a very very heavy health pool, and if he actually is going those defensive upgrades that he has access to, he's got a lot of self sustain just through healing. So if he's playing as this tanky sort of role, like he can stick in fights longer than people would expect. That's Ooh, the team at all coming down. That's a lot of damage. They're gonna have to back out of here. They might give a little bit of power. Yep, that's Herr Dinner going down. The tank got focused down very quickly, backed out, and the trip picked him up. Now, something that I noticed is the Margrave, it looked like, on, uh, well, that's Mad side, right? The yes. Margrave took, uh, took the damage talent on his right click, using his ult to get a pick there on the HK, and Sven's really low, he's gonna have to try to jump out. Yep. But he took the, he took the damage talent and not the reflect talent. Yeah, it's, uh... I'm not I'm not really super surprised by that because uh Charnock and well or you could debate uh having pretty strong auto attacks. Uh but Charnock's LMBs come out like not quite as quickly as some other shooters. So the reflect probably wouldn't get too much value. But the HK 
definitely probably had some amount of value. Yeah. I would argue. I want the I want the reflect for the HK alone. I think. Yeah, I would argue as just also as well for the uh, for the sake of can it. Can you check? Can we check that Margrave to make sure that I saw that correctly? That he has the damage. Oh yeah, does he have damage? Because I didn't quite see it. Maybe you on the, did. On the right click. Oh, right mouse button. Yeah, he yes, does. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. That's... Here comes the wound. There's a lot of damage coming out from Mad now. Really focusing on this wound. That's a Tarnock all come down as well. This wound's probably going down five seconds ago. They have plenty of time. Wu Walt comes down on the Margrave trying to find a kill on the on the backside, but he takes the jump pad out, and they're going to have to commit to try to find that. By the time they get out of there, he's going to be out of town. Yeah, and they... I'm surprised they didn't actually fully really commit. It didn't actually look like anyone on Honey Mustard Girls was really super low on that defense they probably could have gotten at least one pick and had a little ahead but we're we're going into clash very quickly two power rotations yeah it's uh this That's is two power rotations two wounds Liren's on one hp mad is really putting the pressure on i mean this is kind of what i expected from mad because they're such a long standing practice team and I think most of these players even played in the private server during that downtime of, you know, the game being alive between <laughs> nearly 10 years ago and now. They're just, there's just no respect going on here from Matt. They're diving so deep for Sully. The, the Margrave can put out so much damage on whoever he jumps on and then just backs out for the trip to pick it up. Yeah, and then look at, look at a Roger playing so properly here. Just sticking into together. yeah sticking until people are either somewhat low or just going in until someone is like super low or making sure that someone can follow up with him like they're coordinating and that's what you really need to do yeah, as an that assassin was beautiful player. coordination from the assassins and the hk it kind of he seemed almost kind of like he didn't even know that he was getting hit from behind he was just hitting the woo the big fight going on here three man ultimate from the margrave Lots of damage coming out, and her dinner is going to fall over immediately. Now, Sully has to get out because he's, he's starting to get dived by the Margrave now. And Sven's going to take the damage from that, but there's too much coming out. His potions are going to spill. Now, this whole time, HK is throwing all of his damage on the backliners. Yeah. So they're taking a bit, but he's also going to get turned around on and have to get out. I mean, they're basically just ignoring HK at this rate. It's a matter of, like, I mean really there's just so far behind it, it feels like that it's it's kind of difficult really just to do anything <laughs> he sat there for so long and, and was firing but it didn't seem to make any impact at all i think he was it, it, it seemed like the dps were kind of uh sharing his threat almost oh paco's taking way too much damage here that's the upside to this triple range back line or uh, uh double range back line in the assassin yeah, just and, so much damage comes out and if you run away they're gonna follow you yeah and look at this 100 to 50 push even post clash like honey mustard girls just cannot seem to get any sort of footing here they make any aggressive play and they immediately get punished and then they i don't even they maybe got one kill on the other side at some point point. and this says where are your supports now honey mustard girl and they go for the wound that's a Paco ultimate trying to stop their damage, but it might not be enough. There's a lot of coming out from these backliners with the Becca and the HK, and they will find... Oh, tiny little sliver. They will yeah, find the wound. They okay. do finish it off super, super fast, and it's just a matter of... Honestly, that's about what I expected. Just so much damage coming from it. Like, we have we have uh, Beckett and Tmat just doing tons of damage to wound like even even trip actually is does a shocking amount of damage to wound like she is she's got some really good damage output because look, look was like look at the three damage pages three wounds yeah so let's go back over to the drafter friends now my question right, I... my, my question actually Sorry, is um and and hopefully we can get uh maybe banjax to to ask and get an answer for us will uh oh never mind i have an answer um so now the blue side will be uh massive damage and the red side will be honey mustard girls so we're actually seeing uh we're actually seeing mad go ahead and pick to or rather to ban hk hk ban okay so maybe 
I mean, HK is obviously very good on Sirens. They probably, okay, Amani Dan, I was going to say, they probably want to pick Yeah, Amani you called that. Day. You called that for um, sure. I wouldn't if you so didn't. That that's that's probably why they banned the, the HK there to try to take that away. Trip first pick is very interesting. I wonder if we'll see another Trip Wu combo. They seem to really like to uh, prioritize these double assassins. Yep. And taking Margrave away... Over, Margrave Ashlyn. Yeah, taking Beautiful. away the Margrave that Mad had on, on the last time. Now Honey Mustard Girls will have the Margrave and the Ashlyn, since Ashlyn didn't uh, get banned. Yeah, I think uh, get, picking your support early and often in this uh, tournament is going to be very important if you want your support. And I think we're seeing, yep, the H, the team at Sven. Oh, oh hold on. they changed it. They chose Paco. They, they did not lock it in. They decided on Paco. Yeah, so Mad, once again, like not yet opting for a full support if one at all this i is... mean we saw it last game they didn't need a support last game they yeah. just ran straight through them did as much damage <laughs> yeah, they, to the wound as they could they really did so so now uh now mad is the one that has the paco they've kind of traded kind of these frontline tanky characters at this point and now they're locking in sven and once again beckett so three out of the five characters that mad had on their team are now on the same team again yep they i mean ooh, the ramsey yep okay i love ramsey on siren strand i think that this is a great pick there's so many angles for him to follow the kill off of a lot of the points here uh and really finish that up i think and i honestly for the draft i think it's an awesome last pick sven is going to have a lot of problem healing through this ramsey who's going to be diving people when often Sven wants people to back out so he can heal him up. Yeah. Um, so the the Ramsey pick, I'm super in on. All right, so we're back in a rotation here. It looks like uh, Honey Mustard Girls did not get the point. Mad has the point this time around. Uh, that Winter Cyclops is down. And they're pushing them back from the midpoint here. Leadface taking a lot of damage, but he's going to fall back. And Ashlyn really putting it down on the table there. Yeah, I mean... Look at this look at this low health team out on the point. I'm really surprised they didn't actually like go in for that. I really thought this should be yeah, safer just staying there, but she jumped down. Oh no. We're seeing another assault on the midpoint here. Ashlyn's getting really low. She's gonna have to jump down now. Will there be a follow? No, Beckett's gonna take a couple of shots, but she'll get out. Yeah, not the midpoint much. is staying fairly healthy at at 75% HP here. And Beckett's taking a lot of damage from this uh Ramsey. Gonna need to find a way out. Gonna just jump around, but his trip's here to help him, so he might be able to get out here very low. Will be confirmed by the Ramsey. The poison's gonna finish it off, and he's gonna have to find his own way out here, but this is the Ramsey we're talking about. Yeah, and Ramsey's he's gone. super slippery. Not quite able to confirm that kill, and with the D rotation power coming up, I mean, honestly, whoever's holding this midpoint, which actually it looks like. Oh, yeah, it is. It is Mad. So Mad, Mad holding this midpoint, really. Honestly, it's not a. It's not difficult to just kind of be on the full defense. Like, they don't need to confirm that right. kill on Oru. They just needed to get him out of there and stay alive. And exactly. Just... You just wait for this collect that is coming in a couple of seconds. Yep. Your creature's gone back to full HP. Yeah. And, and now it's on Liren to find the interrupt here. Mustard Girls, you're going to need to get in here and do something, but they're too low. Yeah, the, they're... the rampage is going to Mad. Yeah, too low, too uh, too scared, and they can't fully commit to that. Like, even if they stop it and kill it, it wouldn't have been enough power to get the rampage. So Well, they, they pick up the Ramsey on the way out, and now they have a, four, a uh, five to four rampage. Ramsey's not going to be all the way up by the time that Liren gets smacked down. So we've seen Mad take these wounds before, and yep. here they come, Beckett and Trip and uh, the team at all jumping in. This is a lot of damage coming in, and your Ramsey's not in the fight yet, so this wound's gonna be gone. But the question is, can they get kills on the response? That Beckett's gonna die in the oh. middle of the air, and Paco and Sven are gonna have to find their way out. Look at this trio going on over here, just going all the way back around. Sven is super low, but he's safe. The only person here is Oru, and Oru's not gonna be able to find a kill. Oh, again. Yep. The supports are, are definitely keep doing their work here. And they're, once again, just trying to apply this pressure. You know, a good Margrave focus. Ultimate, that's, the, that's the Paco taking a lot of damage now. But your backliner's getting dived on, Mad. You're going to need to do something about that. Uh, Sven's getting really low. He's going to go down. Oh, maybe 1 HP. Okay. 
So that's a trade one for one, it looks like. I didn't see who died in that fight. But now he's low. He has to get out of there. He has to go through. He will fall down to the Paco. Just yeah. one swipe. All it needed. And now they're actually taking an advantage here. This Oru's in danger. That's a trip and a Paco that's diving you. And a Beckett. That's a lot of damage. He's going to be jumping around trying to find his way out, but the cards aren't going to save him. Now they might be able to pressure this Bloomer here with the Oru dead. It's just oh, no, he immediately got up the, the respawn rotations. Yeah. But 90 to 60, you'll take that for mad. Yeah, and all they need to do is just wait for uh, wait for uh, E to capture. You know, again, just kind of hold this D position. You really don't have to do anything. HMG, uh, Honey Mustard Girls... sending their trip to interrupt. Yeah, Honey Mustard Girls has to go around and actually stop this. You know, I, I figure a Rajay would probably go to C and stun it to get it from capturing. But Honey Mustard Girls needs to do the, the... exact same thing. They need to fully commit. You could, you could see that Trip was actually waiting in the ship, kind of spotting for their team to let them know what the enemy team is looking like they're going to do. Yep. But the interrupt for Honey Mustard Girls just doesn't come in, and this is another 60 to 100 push. Yeah. The, I, I have a feeling that Mad's also going to get this wound. They're all just going to take the jump pad up and do the same thing they did last time. Yep. I mean, <laughs> massive damage is an EU team. And if we know anything about EU is that they go for wounds. They're not afraid of fully committing. They're already fully positioned, but the defense seems a little bit better this time. That's a lot of damage coming out on the wound again. We have Beckett all coming out. Team Ad is also committing for this one. That's one shield going on, so they're gonna have to fight through that, but they have plenty of damage to get it. Now Trip's gonna need to find her way out. The Oru is smacking her and she's burning, so they're gonna find her pretty easily if she goes stealth. Ooh. The light, the electric slide into the jump pad it was a little wonky but she'll still get out of there it's just so slippery trip is so fast and, and again a radre being you know the character the, the player that i know that he is he's so comfortable on these characters and it, it just like i'm i'm a little surprised that they didn't actually ban the trip not that i think that you know a radre is the sole problem but like he's so he's so incredibly strong I mean, they banned the they banned the Amani. You can't let them pick Amani on, on this map. Yeah, that's fair. That's uh, the one thing that I've noticed. People make fun of the of the EU strat. Okay, people <laughs> people say that all they do is just go in for the room. The it doesn't matter. When that guardian dies, the game is over, and I've won. I don't care if I'm dying on the back end. Ooh. That's a big ultimate coming out from two players. Team at all coming down to committing for this fight. That's half HP Cyclops now. But Ramsey can't finish it off. He's going to have to get out of there, and he might just die to the freeze. Oh, the snowball misses. No, he's good. Maybe not. And Paco's going deep, and he will finish it off, but Leadface is half HP with no slide. Yeah, they'll trade that. That one's written on the wall. Margrave's going to dive in trying to save his, uh, his back line, but it's not even needed. By the time he's there, they've already killed the threat. I mean, these, these fights are so heavy, but they end up going even, which means that Honey Mustard Girls is just constantly behind. And again, with the E rotation coming up, I'm a little surprised they're going for D and not going for E. Uh, you have to play to the objectives here. It's, it's, right. it's really, you know, it's a lot easier. And they can't confirm any a, kills. Okay, wow, there we go. They really went in for that one. I, what I'm thinking they're trying to do here is just trying to get 80 and hoping that they can stop a push on 80 because they haven't been able to do it on 60 yet. I suppose. And then if they can get a, a, a Beckett return kill, maybe get a, a fight off, but it doesn't look like they're gonna get the 80 here. And this is looking pretty rough for Mustard Girls. Yeah, here. you saw yet uh, again on the map that Trip went and interrupted C, so they couldn't actually get that 20 power. It would be 100 to 90, but you know, the interrupt on the creature just stopped it from grabbing. That's a Paco ult on three. It's gonna save them a lot of time and do a lot of damage. But the Beckett ult's gonna come down and start Pounding away at the wound. Look that at all that damage. Before our eyes. They just can't stop it. There's I don't know if that an nothing they can do. <laughs> yeah, that and was mad. That was so fast. These these games are just incredibly explosive and quick. And I, I, I can't say it enough. I feel like a broken record. But Mad is an old veteran team that just seems to have not at all lost their touch. <laughs> <laughs> like they are they are absolutely obliterating look at the look at the damage it's not even really high numbers but look how many kills that Racky has on the beckett look how many kills yeah. that even and i mean the the guardian the guardian damage yeah knows his job yeah for sure he knows what he's supposed to do like even even paco has four kills or roger only had three it's like it's just so much 
cohesion on massive damage. It's not difficult we didn't, to we, understand why they won. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get to see the 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 cool kind of double assassin combos, but that was just they they really know how to shut down those wounds.